Alrighty, today we're going to be doing the Nicholas Castellanos rebuild. It's been about four days since the last one where we did the Fran Mil Reyes and Yasiel Puig Indians rebuild. And I think besides that trade that the Indians made, this is the best offensive pickup that was made in the trade deadline day. Nicholas Castellanos has been a batter that's been underrated because he's been playing in Detroit and that's a pitcher's park for sure. And moving to the National League, I think he's definitely going to show his ability to swing the bat, which I hope the Cubs can bring him back next year and make him a key part of the outfield. But let's hop into this rebuild. Let's see how things go. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit the like button down below. We are 400 subs away from 15,000. Let's see if we can hit that this weekend. It's a huge challenge for you guys. I definitely want to see if you guys can do it. And also, in the comment section, get involved. Let me know what other type of videos you guys would like to see in the future. And if you need any tickets to any sporting events or anything, Go to SeatGeek, use the code ANTORTEES, and get $20 off your purchase. I think that's it. Let's get into this. So as per usual, I let you guys know which roster I'm using. If you search under the username category, riding rosters, as it appears on screen now, that's the roster I'm using. I have changed a couple things. I've added a couple international uh, signings that teams have made, and then I changed a couple of the recent um, signings like Luke Roy to the Cubs, um, Brad Brock to the Mets, and then... Joe Panic, I haven't added yet because that just happened as I'm recording this. So, with that being said, let's just talk about this this roster because there are some really bad contracts that we're gonna have to address very very soon. So, Kyle Hendricks is good. You know, he normally pitches a you know a good ERA. You know, he's just a good pitcher to have around. 13 million is not terrible. John Lester for 10 million for the next couple seasons, I think, is going to be an issue because he's going to start to decrease in rating very very quickly and we need to get better pitching. That's that's really the big thing with the Cubs right now. Jose Quintana, I'm not really sold on either in franchise and in real life. And for $9 million, it's two years. We'll see how he does. If it does poorly, we're definitely going to have to trade him. You Darvish, again, a big contract. We're going to see how he does. If he does well, we'll keep him. If not, we're going to have to trade him somehow. And then Cole Hamels is a one and done. He's going to stay here for a season, and then we're going to let him walk. So when we look at our prospects, we do have Alice Lai. We do have Alec Mills, Dwayne Underwood Jr., but outside Brendan Little. But I don't know if those guys will feature. So it's it's kind of tough to see if we'll get anybody, you know, of our farm system involved in this rebuild pitching wise. Brendan Morrow's good for two seasons. I know in real life he's most likely done. Um, just his they they're trying to get him back in September. I don't know if it's gonna happen. Steve Ciszek, Pedro Strope. Oh man, Pedro Strope. Um David Phelps is a new addition. Derek Holland is a new addition. Xavier Cedeno hasn't pitched at all this year. Brandon Kinsler has been phenomenal this season. But again, bullpen is a huge issue. You know, we definitely need to strengthen that. Tyler Chatwood luckily leaves at the end of the year. That opens up some more free uh, cap space. Craig Kimbrell, we'll give him a couple years, see how he does. He's hit or miss sometimes. Wilson Contreras, 100% our catcher. Luke Roy, Caratini, not bad backups at all. First base, Rizzo, we're good there. Second base, Ben Zobrist is a good player. I think he's done, you know, with the Cubs. His contract ends at the end of the year. They're trying to get him back in real life. They're trying to get him back into baseball shape, get him, you know, in, in the swing of things. No pun intended. But I think he's done after this year. I think it's time uh, for the Cubs to part ways with him. He's been really good, but, you know, Robel Garcia looked decent. In his time with the Cubs, we have David Bodie, Ian Happs looking like he's found his swing again. So I think second base, Ben Zobris is a piece I would look to trade away. Chris Bryant's definitely our third baseman with Bodie being our backup. Baez being our shortstop. Addison Russell needs to get out of Chicago. He needs to find a new, new baseball team. Kyle Schwarber, I know I traded him last time. I'm going to give him a shot um, because... What I'm going to do is I'm going to move Hayward to center and I'm going to trade Almora Jr. I like Almora Jr. I think he's a great defensive center fielder. I think if he was given more time, you know, consistent playing time, he would be solid. He'd prove his worth. But for this rebuild, we do have Nicholas Castellanos who's going to be playing right field for us. We're going to leave Schwarber in left and then we're going to move Hayward to center. What I would do in real life is I'd have Hayward in right, Almora in center, and then Castellanos in left. But because I traded Schwarber in the last Cubs rebuild, we're going to switch it up a little bit. So, um, Hap, I'm thinking I'm going to move him to second. I think it fits his role a little bit better. So, I'm actually going to do that right now. So, he's in second. Boom. We're going to move Hayward over to center, which doesn't affect his rating too much. I think it drops him like one overall. He'll be fine. 
and then i think that's it you know the team looks see decent you know a lot of aging players with big contracts we do have some young players that we could trade away i think we'll be able to find replacements that are suitable so let's do that let's see what we can do here at the uh the beginning of the season with trades all right what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for luis severino of the yankees we're getting a new pitcher we're gonna be trading addison russell jose quintana and albert almora jr basically the two bulk pieces that i was hoping to trade for other <laughs> for different things like i wanted to trade addison russell in one trade and almora in a different one but if we're getting an, a, a solid pitcher in luis severino i think i think i'll be okay with it all right next trade we're gonna be doing is for a a bullpen arm and also nico goodrum and kind of a platoon player i think he's gonna help us out for ben zobris and david phelps i know david phelps was just traded but i just kind of feel like we could do a little bit better in the bullpen so those are the moves we're going to be making for this year i'm going to change up the lineup change up the pitching rotation i'll show you guys what we're working with for season one and then we'll get the season going all right for season one this is what we are looking like i'm going to have severino in the two spot with hendrix being our ace um we got lester darvish and cole hamels in the bullpen we have holland strope jimenez kinsler kinsler normally doesn't do well so i'm a little little worried about that um tyson ross is just here for the year i'm not really worried about him um kinsler normally doesn't do well so i'm a little worried about that we have c shack moral and kimbrel i like i like those three kind of closing things out when we look at the lineup we have bodie kemp luke roy and caratini on the bench and then we have hayward castellanos bryant Baez, rizzo Contreras, schwarber hap and then goodrum is kind of our dh platoon player i like this i think we've got a really nice looking squad the thing is budget wise we are very limited luckily hamels leaves at the end of the year um chatwood leaves that's what 32 million right there castellanos i'm gonna try to bring back i think we're gonna have to make a trade at the deadline if we we're gonna want to do that not too sure how we're gonna open up some space probably by trading ross um holland so definitely probably gonna have to make some moves at the deadline just to open up some space but for now i like the team see you guys at draft day so we skipped the draft day basically what what i was thinking was we have a really strong team i don't really know if any draft picks will feature i did get a couple good ones um but they weren't like amazing um so what i'm gonna focus on is making top trades and we're gonna go for taylor rogers and trevor hildenberger of the twins for miguel amaya he's really the one that's getting this deal done pedro strope and Derek holland Derek holland is not doing well and neither is pedro strope so i feel like let's get rid of them let's strengthen up our bullpen that's our biggest issue with this team everything else is going pretty well so those are the two and new two new additions to the squad nothing else is really going to change all right so the season I, it wouldn't i wouldn't say it didn't go as planned but you know it could have been better 91 and 71 we're taking on the dodgers it's going to be a tough little ask of the squad but apparently we did have a couple league leaders oh just one severino with the wins and then severino had the cy young and we had moro who was the delivery man so you guys can see i, I mean i changed a couple things throughout the season just to make sure we can make that playoff push but hendrix pretty solid a three era 1.19 whip those are really good numbers 16 and 6 on the year one of our more consistent pitchers severino again a very consistent pitcher sub three era low whip I like to see that good strikeout numbers as well. Darvish struggled a little bit. So I might give him one more year just to see if he can like bounce back. But we'll have to wait and see. Hamels wasn't terrible. Lester kind of was. So it might be time for Lester to get out. Edward Alzale was actually really solid in that long relief role. We brought him up. We sent Caratini down. So I think that was the right move for the bullpen. And then we look at everybody else. It, it wasn't amazing. I don't know why he's angry. Why is he angry? Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't really understand why he's angry, but uh, Hildenberger did very well. Kimbrell did solid, and Moro was amazing as our, our closer. Only for one blown save throughout the season. And I think Kimbrell had... He, he didn't get too many opportunities, but when I had him in the closing spot, his ERA was like a 6 so i just decided you know what let's move him to the setup role i think it might help him a little bit more so let's take a look up at our lineup really fast david bodie 264 it's not terrible 315 for tony kemp and then lucroy hit 234 when we look at our lineup ian hap hit 250 okay 22 homers 67 rbis 27 doubles it's not terrible he kind of split his time with um 
Goodrum. So that was kind of what happened. Castellanos, amazing year. And that's what we're looking at. He's a potential, 82 overall, 37 doubles, 31 home runs, 109 RBIs. Good stuff to see. OPS is almost at 1,000. I mean, it was around 900, but still really solid. Chris Bryant had a good year as well. Javi Baez, 270s, eh, 21 home runs, 92 RBIs, a little low. Um, Rizzo, 270, 27 home runs, 89 RBIs. So the RBIs are a little low. Everything else looks about pretty standard for what Rizzo does. Contreras, 22 home runs, 87 RBIs. Those are good numbers for catchers in today's baseball. Good OPS, good slugging. I like to see that. Schwarber, 260. That might be a record I've seen for Schwarber in a franchise, but 22 home runs, 66 RBIs. Not terrible, not terrible at all. Um, Jason Hayward. He was 200 average at the trade deadline. He did he did bring it up, so he definitely had a good second half, but not what I would want, you know, for a player I'm paying 20 million for. I definitely want to see him in the 270s, 280s. Nico Goodrum, very solid little pickup if you ever need like a platoon player or a good utility player. Nico Goodrum is a very good player to pick up, so I definitely will bring him back. He's just very reliable, very good to have. Looking at our farm system, I forgot we had Descalso. We need to get rid of that. Robel Garcia is another player I'm looking to bring up. 78 overall. That'll definitely help us out. Um, plus, then Goodrum can be our backup outfielder. And then we have Bodie and Robel Garcia as our infielders. Luke Croy or Caratini as our catcher. So I like that. Pitching-wise, Chatwood's leaving. And then, I mean, really nobody else can really be moved up maybe alzali makes that fifth spot and then we let hamels go we'll definitely make some moves once this you know the offseason comes but let's get into these playoffs versus the dodgers and facing elimination no surprise there home at wrigley field yeah i can't i can't let these two go they were just too inconsistent throughout the year let's go into it looking at their lineup everything looks the same um you know, nothing looks like it's changed. Maeda's on the mound. We got to we gotta score early, I think. I think that's going to be the key. If we can get that first run or two, I think we'll be in a good spot. Hendricks, okay, we're in a good spot here. Bases loaded for Baez, and he pops up. Really? So I'm keeping an eye on Hendricks' stamina because he did pitch recently. Hendricks is two for two. Who Who is this man? First and third for Bryant, and we can't take advantage of it. We've had two opportunities with man in scoring position. Anthony Rizzo makes it a one-run game. Michael Walker, okay, that's a new addition. And Hendricks, all right, watching Hendricks. Tie ball game, only his second hit allowed, really? All right, come on, let's, we got to bring in these runs. All right, so that's Probably, if we can get to Hendricks in the lineup, that's probably his last at, like last inning pitching. Double play, though. Come on, Hendricks. Get me through nine. Nine innings, one hit ball. We're going to pinch hit for him. Going against the lefty. Probably. Oh, do we go Bodie or do we go Goodrum? We'll go Bodie. Can he get on? Ooh, he does. Okay, we're going to pinch run for Bodie. Tony Kemp. Really? I guess we're going to, we'll save Goodrum because he's a better hitter. Single first and second, no outs. Can we walk it off here? There it is. Kyle Hendricks. Nine innings, one run ball. What an outing. Whew, that home run was really just unlucky. Really unlucky. We should have just had the shot out there. But now at Dodger Stadium, Sevy's going to take the mound. A little tired. I have faith in him, though, against Kershaw. So we're going to have a good little matchup here. Oh, come on. Not the way to start the game. First and second, Nico Goodrum brings in the tying run. There we go. Bases loaded for Hayward, and he flies out. But it's a, not a tie ball game anymore. We're down one. Verdugo goes deep. Severino. What is with? I mean, I know you're tired. I think that was his last inning, unfortunately. There we go. Tie. Oh, no. We're down one still. Sack bunt. Can we get the sack fly? We can't. I'm going to give him one more inning. All right, four innings for Sevi. Unfortunately, couldn't get more. We do have a tie game thanks to Baez. And we're going we're gonna to leave it there. We're going to go to Alzali. Base is loaded. Okay, we're not going to go to Alzali. We're going to go to Taylor Rogers. 
really lefty lefty grand slam and then he gives up a home run <sighs> can't believe that just happened like that's just what what are the odds you know we play the matchups we had it set i was like okay you get the bases loaded like that's not what i'm looking for but then you go and allow a lefty lefty grand slam rogers like what why taylor rogers why you got to go and allow a grand slam lefty lefty like that that's what really just changed the game completely the home run after that is just if you you allow that one home run okay it's a one run game it's nine to four or not nine to four uh four to three but that grand slam just really hurt that one we could we should have won that the braves beat the astros in the postseason uh or in the world series sorry the brave man i'm just so just man the that that matchup right there really hurt so c shack looking at our our bullpen i think c shack does definitely need to come back um if we can keep them eight mil though that's a lot especially when we have so like c shack will leave kinsler is gonna leave we're gonna have like moro kimbrell rogers hildenberger and jimenez so we'll have two empty spots we don't really have anybody in our farm system that can step up but i still think eight mil is a lot and he he didn't pitch terribly like a 388 not terrible at all um cole hamels is done uh she's just gonna decrease in rating too quickly and i don't think we like should keep that um Jonathan Lucroy was solid for us. 233 is not amazing, but Victor Caratini is a, a decent little backup. I think we'll be fine there. I think we're just going to let everybody else. I think we're just going to let everybody walk. I think that's just what's going to happen. And then looking at the 40 man, not really worried if he leaves. Arbitration wise, probably not these bottom three. And then contracts wise. Everybody should get one. Um, Tony Kemp. Mm, I said, what did I say we were going to do? We were going to have Goodrum as our outfielder. We're going to keep Robel Garcia. So I think we're going to let, maybe we bring him back and just trade him for like a really good pitcher or bullpen arm. So we'll probably bring him back. So we'll bring everybody back and then we'll just kind of go from there. So to start season two, we're going to go for a trade. Free agency was okay. I'll show you what I did, but we're going to go for Matt Strom of the Padres as a long reliever because we're going to move Alzali to that starting rotation spot. We're going to be trading Craig Kimbrell mostly because we have Brandon Morrow who did really well in the closing spot and Craig Kimbrell is just he didn't have a bad year at all. Like but his morale is going to drop because he's not going to be in the starting like the, the the closing spot is basically what I'm saying. And for 14 million, I don't really want to pay a bullpen arm 14 million if they're not going to be like my closer. So Craig Kimball's going to be traded. And he he didn't. He didn't have a bad year at all. He actually had a really solid year. 270 ERA is really good. Um, I'm just looking at the current state of our bullpen. And like we have Taylor Rogers who could hopefully do better. <laughs> That's kind of my question. Like, is he going to do better? We brought back C Shek, who again didn't have a great year. So I guess we could use Kimball here. And just maybe try to find a way to get Strom in that long relief role. That might actually... Let's see if we can do that. Because now that I'm thinking about it, that might not be a bad thing to do. So do we have anybody we could trade? Let me see if I can figure this out. If I can, I will show you guys in a sec. Alrighty, so we figured it out. Johnny Field, Daniel Descalso, and Mark Zagunis. So two like older outfield prospects and then daniel descalso who's not getting used at all for matt strom that's our long reliever i figured out the bullpen now i'll show you guys who we acquired in the offseason it wasn't too crazy or anything um this guy was in free agency he's a pitcher doesn't look that great but just the potential wise i, I thought of him more as a um trade piece if necessary and then i think Tyler Danish was another one that we we acquired. B potential pitcher again. Looking at the uh, the trade piece more than anything, Alex Jackson looks like a really solid catcher 
for a free agent so i signed him up kurt sedanio another player i was like you know what we'll give him a shot as a catcher um howard ramos i just signed him because we needed somebody and that was really about it for free agency nothing too crazy we did bring back um c shack like i mentioned and i think this is how we're gonna rock to start the year actually no i want to trade john lester because he looks very bad outside of that you guys can see what we're rocking with for the squad we brought back kemp i think we're just gonna keep him because he actually hit the ball really well throughout the season bodie caratini robel garcia and then we have this obviously i think this is a solid lineup not too much has changed um i don't want Baez leading off though um maybe we'll try what they did in real life with schwarber leading off and then we'll put castellanos in the two we'll go kind of go like that i'll switch the lineup around i do want to find a new pitcher for lester though all right what we're gonna do is philip evans eddie martinez and john lester for mike minor contract expires at the end of the year that means we can either bring them back or we can find a new free agent signing in the offseason i think this is a better trade we get a player who shouldn't decrease too quickly and i think we should be fine let me just quickly take a look at like our okay we need to add some players to our triple a team for sure um but then yeah that's that's the squad i think i, I like it you know strom in the long relief role we got minor there in the four spot for the starting rotation, Severino, Hendricks, Darvish, and then Alzali. Um, I think this is good. I kind of like the way it looks. Obviously, we kept the lineup the same. So far, so good. I'm going to sign a couple low-rated free agents to cover the AAA lineup since it's looking a little look, looking a little bare. Um, not much is going on here. Other than that, I think that's how Season 2 is going to start. So the changes we made really paid off because this season went so much better than last year. You guys can see 106 and 60 again we're taking on the dodgers though so that's a little bit of a disappointment when we look at our league leaders chris bryant had the best war in the majors and then brandon morrow again was a really solid closer for us so that might be someone we need to bring back jason hayward had a gold glove and then again morrow was the delivery man of the year hold on carlos carrasco was the mvp really he was a player actually considered trading for um as part of the as part of the lester deal and i decided to get Mike Miner instead because it didn't take as much to trade for him. So let's look at our bullpen first. Strom, not too bad. Obviously, it's not the same as last year, but he did pitch more innings. Um, he was 4 0 on the year, good ERA, decent, decent whip. Um, overall, pretty happy with how that went. His contract is arbitration for the next year, so we'll be fine. Hildenberger is probably a player I'm going to look to trade next year. He's just not performing as actually, he had a good year last year, just this year he struggled a little bit. So we'll give him we'll give him a bounce back here next year. Joe Jimenez very solid i like that a lot doing very well steve c -Sheck, we signed him for two years I, we did give him a player option though so we'll see if he comes back he did pitch very well though uh taylor rogers bounce back year good to see whip dropped by quite a bit era as well kimbrell you know not as good as he was last year obviously he's not a close like a setup man he's more of a closer so we do have him for another year we'll probably try to bring him we'll, we'll keep him or we'll trade him it says moro's going down but i think i think we're gonna try to bring him back you know his stats actually his stats are decreasing pretty quickly maybe not maybe we let him go you know his time here was amazing though a 0.7 whip only blew two saves in two years and if you go back to 2018 it's i mean crazy numbers severino very good numbers low era really good whip crazy good whip even better than last year unreal kyle hendricks again very good numbers she's crazy sub three whip very low uh no sub three era very low whip you darvish bounce back here that's what i was hoping for i want to see those numbers the whip again is a little high but i think he'll be fine uh, mike minor did very well and probably the one year we keep him unless there's like a, just a poor starting pitcher free agency market then we'll just go with somebody else and alzali not terrible wins and losses obviously aren't there but for a five starter those are really good numbers and i like to see that so i think we'll be set for five maybe just a four starter uh when you look at you know our farm system it's not amazing um this is a guy that i drafted last year he's definitely not going to be featuring Kyle Ryan in the bullpen, not really an option. Dwayne Underwood would probably be the only player who could step up next season. And I just don't think he's a, a, a player that's MLB quality just yet. So let's take a look at our lineup. If we look at our farm system, 
Um, Kurt Cedeno, we signed him. He doesn't look that great. Nico Horner, I wish he was going to be good enough to put into the team. He's just just not yet. El Eli Cairo was a player that I signed in free agency to fill up the, the minor league roster. Alex Jackson looks really good for that free agent catcher that we signed. Especially since Caratini doesn't hit the ball well. We may maybe use um, Alex Jackson instead. But overall bench was solid. Wasn't terrible. Um, obviously limited plate appearances. Actually not really. Pretty low ER, uh, averages for these two. Um, Schwarber leadoff role looks to be his spot. <laughs> 270 average. A 380 on base percentage. And almost a 900 OPS. RBIs went up from last year. Walks about the same. Home runs are up. Doubles went up. That may be the spot for him. Baez, man, it just sucks that he doesn't hit for a high average like he does in real life. Like this right here. Or even like this. Or like this. Usually stays around the 260s. Um, obviously, the discipline and vision probably play into that. But good amount of doubles. Good amount of triples. Home runs. RBIs are up. Um, Rizzo, not terrible. Uh, we got him for one more year. Average is good. Home runs and RBIs dipped a little bit. But um, average isn't bad. On base percentage is okay. Slugging is down. OPS is down. Chris Bryant is going up. 36 home runs, 103 RBIs, which is good. Good amount of doubles as well with 36. Good average OPS, all that stuff. Really solid. Nicholas Castellanos moved him down a little bit in the lineup, but I can tell it didn't really bother him. Good amount of doubles, home runs, RBIs. Um, average dipped a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that. The on-base percentage was still pretty good. Slugging, OPS. Overall, pretty happy with the way things are. Wilson Contreras is just unreal. Good average, good OPS for a catcher. Um, slugging percentages up there. Home runs, RBIs, 32 doubles. Crazy. Jason Hayward hit 254, so a little bit better than last year. Um, walk numbers went up by a lot. RBIs, home runs, doubles were about the same, so good numbers to see. Ian Happ slowly getting up there. The average went down a little bit. Actually, all of his stats, like average on base percentage slugging, OPS went down. Um, run production was still pretty much the same. Took some more walks, um, but doubles went down a little bit too, which is disappointing to see. And Nico Goodrum is doing pretty solid, and we have him for another year. So he, maybe he plays second base for us. Maybe David Bodie plays second base for us since Ian Happ really isn't panning out there. Overall, pretty happy with the team. Obviously, we won on what? How many games? 102 i was gonna say 112 but i knew that wasn't right so we won 102 games obviously something's going right let's play the dodgers and again I just the dodgers are my kryptonite we got to find a way to avoid the dodgers like just have the best record in baseball we're gonna give it to mike minor um if we go to game five obviously we'll go to severino um or hendrix but we got to get this win first bias double can't bring him home um, looking at their lineup, it doesn't look mu like much has changed. I think the first baseman has changed with Beatty, but overall, nothing too different. Ian Happ, there we go. And Mike Miner with the single, helping himself. Um, he does allow two runs to get them back into the game, but I guess it's not terrible. This is not looking good, though. They do have the lead, which is not good, obviously. Um, if we can give us like five innings, I'd be set there. Give me one more inning. There we go. That's it. Mike Miner's done for the day. We just got to get out of this situation now. So facing a string of lefties in the sixth. We'll go to Taylor Rogers. Gets us out of it. I'll take that for sure. Okay. Um, pitching change. String of righties now. We're going to go to C-Sheck. Double. And a fly out. So pinch hit for him. We're limited on our appearances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. So I can see who they're going to throw on there. A righty. Um, so we have Garcia. Do we use Garcia or do we use Goodrum? I think we use Goodrum here. He flies out, unfortunately. We got to score a run. Man, the, this string of lefties is just so dangerous. We need to get on ninth inning. We're down one. That's a good start. Um, do we have anybody who can play first? We do. Do we have anybody with some speed now? That's the real question. 66 is our best. I think we kind of have to. So let's pinch run. Tony Kemp. Strikeout. No. Fielder's choice. A walk. Ian Happ. Can you be clutch again? He doesn't. And we're eliminated once again. We let Mike Leak just absolutely dominate us. It's just, again, 
the Dodgers won. So the Dodgers won the World Series. They beat the Indians. And it's just, that, that one wasn't as bad. The bullpen was good. The pitching was good. I noticed that the lineup was quiet. I think we scored two or three runs the entire series. That's just, that's not good enough. Yeah, one run, two runs, two runs, and then we won, we scored four. So, I mean, we got to score more than two runs a, 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 a game. That's just not good enough. So, we'll definitely fill up the, the staff. He's dropping so quickly. I don't think we can bring him back. Mike Miner, I'm going to see if there's other pitching options available. That's like $15 million in cap space that we'll have to work with right there. So, I'm going to see if we can find some staff real fast. Actually, I'll wait. I'll wait for the staff. Let's get to free agency. C Shek joined us. All right, cool. That's good. We've got a good arm for next season. Um, looking at arbitration, I think every, everyone here did pretty well. Really, he's the only one that I'm hesitant about, but I still think I'll bring him back. And then when we look at free agents, for the most part, I'm going to bring everybody back there. When we look at this, though, this is where things get a little interesting because. Brandon Morrow, we do need a closer. We could move Kimbrel there, but I feel like Kimbrel, maybe not the move. Maybe bring in Brad Hand. Yeah, maybe not. Um, hmm. Pitching wise, it's looking a little scarce too. So maybe Mike Miner is the best option. I'll figure it out. I showed you arbitration. I showed you contracts. Let's get into season three. All right, call me crazy, but I'm gonna trade for an aging closer because I think it might work. We're gonna go for Kirby Yates of the Padres. When you look at his stats, yes, I know he's 34. But when you look at his stats, his attributes, they just look through the roof. Not much is going down. And I have a feeling he's going to do well just for one season. Craig Kimbrell is going to be making way along with Duncan Robinson and Dwayne Underwood Jr. Yes, I know. Um, I did have a trade for Kenley figured out. But then I was like, he, there's no reason to give players to the Dodgers. They're just going to come back to hurt us. So that's going to be one trade to start season three. I'm still actually in the offseason. But I wanted to make that trade first. Alrighty, so final season with Castellanos on the Cubs. Let's take a look at the lineup now. So, offensively, we look really strong. I mean, Rizzo, 82, is okay. Hayward, maybe we trade Hayward, try to find a new center fielder who actually, you know, has a little bit of pop off the bat. Maybe we can move Hap back to center. You know, it's it's tough. You know, maybe use Robel Garcia as a second baseman this year. We do still have Nico Goodrum. Overall, the team isn't bad. I mean, when you look at Hap's numbers, 20 home runs for a second baseman isn't bad at all. It's actually pretty solid in today's baseball standards. Uh, when you look at the bullpen, we brought in Taylor Williams as another option. Decent stats overall. Um, when you look at the other ones that are available, it's really only, you know, the same overall. Not many too great options. I thought about bringing in Martin Perez as a pitcher instead of Robbie Ray. But I, I'm going to give Robbie Ray a shot. It normally doesn't go well but we'll give him a shot um kirby yates we've already talked about in the trade but overall the bullpen and stuff looks about the same starting rotation is really about the same i like it i like the lineup not too much has changed we'll see how it goes i have a feeling trades are going to be needed to be made at the deadline but again i could be wrong everything could be like the best season we've ever had and then we win the world series so we'll see and let's just, let's just go into it, see how things play out. So at the deadline for season three, things are actually going really well. Like probably the best out of the season so far. But we're going to make a trade just to strengthen the bullpen a little bit more. So what we're looking at is a new lefty in the bullpen. Because Rodgers is just, he's going down in overall. He's going down in potential. He's just struggling. He's not really turning out to be the lefty that I expected. So we're going to trade Oscar De La Cruz and Joshua McNeil for AJ Minter of the Braves. Having a really good year. Um... As a closer but we're gonna kind of use him as another setup guy and when we look at the bullpen now not much is gonna change it's just Minter's gonna slot right there and everything else is gonna be the same um, I'm liking the way the team's looking I'm liking the way the team's playing that was really the only change that I wanted to make so we're gonna leave it there at the trade deadline for season three and we're gonna play out the rest of the season see how things go all right so we're not playing the Dodgers the first round which is good which means we finished the season 1755 which we were the best in the National League taking on the winner of the wild card game, which is really good. We don't have to play the Dodgers. We don't have to worry about having a really rough time. We are going to be playing the Diamondbacks or the Mets, though. League leaders, Ian Happ had the most walks, and Seve had the best winning percentage, and Yates had the most close. So, pretty solid. Was it the most close? He was the best reliever, basically. Juan Soto 
was the MVP. So we didn't win any awards, but let's take a look at our bullpen. So Strom, really good pickup in that long relief spot. He's been really good for us. Hildenberger, bounce back year, really solid. Obviously, when we picked him up, he did well. Struggled a little bit last year, but then this season did really solid. 262 ERA, 120 whip, perfect. Joe Jimenez, really good year as well. Normally, he doesn't do well for us uh, whenever I pick him up, but really, really good. Really like to see that. Taylor Williams, ERA is kind of high, so is the whip. So, I mean, he wasn't the best of acquisitions, but... I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna freak out about it. You know, it's it's one bullpen arm. I think we'll be okay. Steve Ciszek, really good. I'm glad we brought him back for these final two seasons. He's been lights out for us. And AJ Minter, maybe not a hold, maybe more of a middle relief guy, but still really solid. And then Kirby Yates, it says he's going down. Luckily, last season he does really well. He did blow 10 saves, which is more than like his last like four years combined. But 56 saves, still pretty solid. So Severino, 274 ERA with a 105 whip is great. I'm really glad we traded for him. It gave us an ace that we needed, and it worked out perfectly. Hendricks had his worst year since we, you know, since we started this, and it still was not a bad year at all. You know, a 357 ERA, a 119 whip, 172 strikeouts when he's not a strikeout guy, still really solid. Robbie Ray, pretty solid. I mean, the whip is high, but he's known for a guy that. You know allows quite a bit of hits you know his hits per nine are kind of low actually his hits per nine are kind of high I'm surprised his whips that high but overall normally he's like a five era when i trade for him so i will take that 100 what you darvish had his best year so far so he's getting better as he gets older and alzali again pretty solid for a five starter i'm not gonna freak out about those numbers three five era 137 whip not bad not bad at all so overall pretty happy with the way the pitching went it's probably one of our better pitching staffs that we've had throughout rebuilds bodie caratini goodrum sedeno so they sent down kemp how was he doing 261 i would rather have kemp than sedeno or would i mm. I feel like Kemp gives us a better hitting bat. I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring back Kemp instead of Sedeno. I just I feel I feel like he's a he's a better option. So we're going to remove him from the playoff squad. So there's that. So let's get back to the lineup. Let's take a look see how things went. So Bodie, Kemp, Caratini, overall pretty solid. Um actually really solid for the bench bats. Schwarber I guess they figured him out in the the, uh, the leadoff role. Everything went down, slugging OPS on base percentage average. Home runs went up, though, which is kind of cool to see. So, he, I mean, he still is putting up good power numbers. Baez had his worst year in terms of average on base percentage, slugging, and OPS, which is not good. Bryant had a decent year. Home runs dipped a little bit. So did RBIs. Um, interesting. But average went up. Um, everything else went down which is interesting. A good amount of doubles once again. Stolen bases went up. Okay. Nicholas Castellanos has been consistent for us. Around the 30 home run mark, 100 plus RBIs, good amount of walks, good amount of doubles. It's just a doubles machine. Still really solid. Wilson Contreras, good home run hitter for a catcher, good amount of doubles. I mean, I'm not going to complain about that at all. 250 average, but I mean, it's for it's a catcher hitting 20 home runs. You're not you're not going to freak out when his average dips a little bit. Rizzo, good year, 290 average, almost a 400 on base percentage. Jason Hayward had his best year in terms of average. On, oh, actually, not on base percentage, not slugging, and not OPS, just average. Okay. Um, okay. So just the average went up, but everything else was like meh. Uh, when you look at Ian Happ, good amount of walks. I like to see that. RBIs are about the same. Home runs went up a little bit. Doubles went up. Um, stolen bases is about the same. He did get caught stealing a little bit more, but more hits. Average on base percentage, slugging, and OPS all went up. So it's looking like he's finally starting to hit that growth spurt in terms of overall. Robel Garcia was okay. Over, I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. I might put Goodrum as our DH, though. We'll see. We'll see how things go. I feel confident with the pitching. Now I'm just a little wary with the way the offense is looking. Um just with the low amount of home runs the low amount of like the low average on base percentage and stuff like that so we'll see how things are we're playing the diamondbacks 
and how are we losing to the Diamondbacks? Like, what is? Let me let me see this again. I mean, we're the runs are there, kind of, kind of. So Robbie Ray facing his former team. Is this what we want to do? It seems like they flip their starting rotation. I don't know. It's weird. Robbie Ray versus his former team. Let's see how this goes. Starts it off with a single double play, though. Come on. So they get added Reddick. Aswahe was in their farm system to start the season. They had Josh Donaldson. He's new. That's, those are a couple new changes. Stolen base by Aswahe. Josh Donaldson gets the first run. Hayward gets us back into it. I'll take solo shot for Kevin Crone. Another run scores, and we're down two. Really? We're going to struggle this bad? So we've allowed four runs already, which is kind of the average for what they've scored. And we've got a run back. Rizzo gets gets one in. Can we bring in one more? Robbie Ray doesn't doesn't can't swing the bat. I'm not gonna get upset about that one. So four innings for Robbie Ray. Baez gets us within one. First and second. No outs. Castellanos, this is your rebuild. No. All right. Sack fly. Base is loaded. All right. All right. I'll take that run. Pitching change. Another run. Another one. Do we take the do we go with the pitching change? He is kind of tired. So what I'm gonna do is we got a righty up. I'm gonna go. Goodrum's got some speed, so I want to hold on to him. Let's go. Let's go Robel Garcia. Th bases clearing double. That was the call for sure. And we've just opened up this game. Holy cow. I will take that. We're gonna go to we'll go Hildenberger. One, two, three inning. Perfect. We'll keep him in for another inning. Uh, might as well. Things are going pretty solid. I mean, we have an eight-run lead. I'm not going to freak out unless, like, crazy stuff starts to happen. So, so far, so good. We'll take out Hildenberger right now. We'll go to we'll go to Williams, give him some reps. All right. No run score, which is good. Ninth inning. We'll probably let Williams go again unless things get out of hand. He gets us out of it. 12-4 victory. Perfect. We opened up that game early, kept the lead. Whew, that's what we need. It's we need to win this game. We're home Wrigley Field. We're gonna let Severino take the mound. Teams rested. They have Orlando Arcia too. Okay, Schwarber singles. That's good. Double play to start the game again. We can't have those. Man, Baez just having a down year. Bases loaded. Luckily the pitcher came up. That was, whoo. That was a little. That was a little little sketchy. Bases loaded with the pitcher up, but we got out of that. And then Schwarber gives us a lead. Then Baez comes back, makes it a three-run game. Perfect. All right, so we still have that three-run lead. Sevi, I need like five or six innings out of you just to be safe. Can we do that? Perfect. There's five. We got a double with Bryant. Castellanos goes deep, makes it five to nothing. Sevi goes double play, gets us out of it. So I'm going to see if I can get seven out of him. I'm getting greedy with it. We're going to take him out. His, his, his stamina is dead. Perfect. We get out of that. Seventh is done. Triple to start it off. Double play. Really? Um, single, single. All right. So they're probably going to bring in somebody. We're going to go to C-Shack, though. Whew, gets out of that. Perfect. Eighth is over. We're going to go to the ninth. Double play. Mm. Probably should have brought a pinch hitter in, but we're going to go to Kirby Yates. And he is going to shut the door. Perfect. We advance. We're probably taking on the Dodgers. Oh, we're taking on the Nationals. Really? Okay. Sevi is not pitching because he just pitched. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bump him down to the third spot. And we're going to rock like that. So going against the Nationals, Strasburg, Hendricks. We get the win 2 to nothing. Then we get the second game. Sevi, 8-1. to one. Really? All right, we're up three to one. Can Alzali send us through to the World Series? He doesn't. C Shack actually got us the loss there. And we advance into the World Series to take on the Rays or the White Sox. And it's going to be the Rays. So what we're going to do is we're going to go like that. Just because Robbie Ray has been a little bit of a question mark for me. Don't feel comfortable with him. So World Series, Cubs, Rays. And we have... 1-1, one 2-1, to 3-1, one, to, one, three to one. and because this is the World Series, like, this is the elimination game, the one, the win it all, we are at Tropicana, 
We're going to go Seve. Lineup looks decent. We're going against a lefty. So do we bring in Goodrum and sh keep Schwarber for later? I feel like that's the move we got to do. I think that's definitely what we should do. All right, so we're going to try that. Single, strikeout, runners thrown out. First and third, come on, Wilson. Rizzo. All right, so looking at their lineup, Lourdes Gurriel, that's a good addition. Double to start the game. Gets us out of it. Perfect. One, two, three, though. That's not what I want to see. Poof. A little bit of a pitcher's duel going on. Double play. Yikes. One run scores thanks to G-Man Choi. Really? So we're down one. It's five hits for each team. I mean, it's it's pretty equal. We just got to get... We're not getting base runners now. We're just... We're stalling, which is not good. Looks like the offense has gone quiet. A double to start it. That's good. Fly out. Sack fly. Sack fly, please. A walk. Sack fly. Strike out. Oh, Nicholas Castellanos comes in clutch, though. Sevi, come on. Get me out of this inning. Perfect. Heading into the ninth. We have Rowe, Hayward. We might take out Bodie. We won't take out Bodie. Gets on. Goodrum gives us the lead. Then half extends it. And I think that might be it. We're going to go to Kirby Yates. He's going to do his job. And he's going to shut the door. And we're going to win the World Series in the last season. Whew, perfect. Eight innings pitch for Seve. That was, that was lights out. Let's take a look at the awards. Playoff MVP was Wilson Contreras. And the World Series MVP was Nico Goodrum with one home run, two RBIs, and a 444 average. And then seven home runs throughout the postseason for Wilson Contreras with 13 RBIs and a 358 average. So overall, it looked like it played out pretty well. So Robbie Ray, not good in the playoffs. A 252 whip is not good at all. Savvy was lights out. You guys can see his stats throughout the postseason, really solid. Hendricks as well, very, very good. Darvish was solid. Uh, I'm not going to complain about that. Alzali, given limited opportunity, pitched very well. I mean, pretty impressed with that. Strom did well in his uh, inning in two thirds. Hildenberger did well, very, very well. Very consistent, a great arm to rely on in the postseason. Sub one ERA, a .53 whip. Jimenez was solid. Williams struggled a little bit. c -Sheck, yikes. He was not as consistent as we would have hoped. And then Yates, perfect, perfect. Let's take a look at our lineup, see how things went. Um, Kemp. Four at bats, two hits, um, and an RBI. So he was he was there. Um, Robel Garcia did get one at bat, and he was clutch against the Diamondbacks. He had that bases clearing double that started that huge rally where we scored like eight or nine runs that inning. Baez struggled very, very heavily. Like he just struggled a lot in the postseason. Chris Bryant was good. Castellano struggled a little bit, but overall he was consistent throughout this entire rebuild like this was his worst year and he still hit 31 home runs and 106 rbis wilson Contreras was playoff mvp rizzo struggled hayward 273 is not bad hap was good and then goodrum was clutch when it mattered world series time so that's gonna end it that's the rebuild i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure you hit the like button down below subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content and in the comment section down below let me know which rebuilds you would like to see in the future also like i, I just want to know what other types of videos you guys would like to see do you want to see a new franchise on the channel we definitely are going to continue that ncaa dynasty i have it ready to go for you guys tomorrow so let me know i'll get you guys those videos so that's about it guys i hope you guys enjoyed it again hit the like button down below we are 400 subs away from 15,000. let's hit that by did i say four we're 400 away from 15,000. Let's try to hit that by the end of the weekend. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.